Hi, welcome to the Urban Outdoorsman SoCal video. My name is Danny Milton, and today we're going to be talking about the Yeti SB150. Okay, we're going to keep this video as short as possible. I'm not going to show a whole lot of the uh, video that I captured with my GoPro while I was riding this bike. I already put out a video that shows all of my raw footage of the, the three trails that I rode downhill on this bike. I'll put the link right there. Um, I was lucky enough to ride this bike on some of my local trails. I took it down Lynx Trail, Rocket Trail, and Five Oaks, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So one quick thing before we get into the video, I, I would like you guys to do all that fun stuff for me. Please hit that like button, share, subscribe, leave me as many comments as you possibly want. If you have any questions about the bike, put them down below. I usually answer my questions really quickly um, just to keep the, the flow of you know the comments going back and forth. The more comments and the more likes, the more YouTube will you know suggest this video to other people and the more it gets watched. So as we're talking about geometry and specs and everything about the bike, um, just to let you know, I am six foot two, 240 pounds, give or take a couple pounds here and there, depending on how many beers I've had. And uh, all of the geometry I'm gonna be telling you about is for the extra large frame. So the model that I rode was the T1, that's their upper level of carbon frame. I'm um, just looking at my notes here. The front fork had the, the Fox Factory Grip, uh, Grip 2, which is the 36. It had the Fox Factory X2 uh, shock in the rear, and this was the XT build. It had the XT four piston brakes front and rear, and it also had the new XT drivetrain, the one by 12 drivetrain with the uh, 10 to 51 cassette. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is the initial feel, how, how you feel when you sit on this bike. Hopefully you've got the right frame size uh, if you do, or if you are lucky enough to demo the bike. When I first sat down on this bike, it, it felt really good, the reach and, and the C2 bangles, all those kind of things. Uh, but the first thing that you typically feel is the suspension. And, you know, I'm a bigger guy. Uh, when I did sit down on this bike, it I just kind of like eased into it very soft and it was very comfortable uh, a feel, you know, right off the bat. So the other thing you're going to notice right away is how steep this C2 bangle is. The C2 bangle on this bike for the extra large frame is 76.8 degrees, which is really steep, especially for an enduro bike. And it, it really puts you in kind of an upright position, gets you closer to those pedals, and just makes it really easy for those long climbs. So next we're gonna talk about climbing. And climbing is, you know, it's one of those things that you have to do unless you go to a bike park where there's a chairlift. You have to climb these hills. And I'm not that guy that has to set PRs climbing. I climb because I have to. I want to save as much energy as I can for the downhills. So I'm not racing up hills. I'm not trying to set PRs or anything like that. And that being said, every Yeti bike that I've ever ridden, I've ridden the, the SB, what was it, the SB6 a couple years ago. I also rode the SB100. Um, I've ridden the SB165 and now the 150. Uh, the video for the SB165 will be coming out after this one. Every Yeti bike that I've ridden of those four, they all climb just amazing. There is, because of that, uh, you know, because of that Switch Infinity system and all of the different leverages and the, the anti-squat staying super high when you're in a seated position pedaling, you know, that the, the first initial part of the, of the shock staying really high when you're in that pedaling position, it's just, it's just really amazing that they can get a bike this big with 29 inch tires and just to climb, to climb hills better than almost anything I've ever ridden. It's, it's, really, it's really a testament to how much effort that they put into these bikes, all of the geometry and the engineering, it's, it's really great. And on top of that, while you are in those climbs, you know, I do a lot of fire road climbing here in Southern California, uh, not too much technical stuff. You do have you know that low bump sensitivity and it does it, it stays really low there's no bounce f as your back tire goes over that rock there's no you know rise in the back end at all it just kind of stays stuck to the ground and keeps that low bump sens uh, sensitivity really nice and you know a very efficient peddler no pedal bob whatsoever 
As we mentioned earlier, that really steep C2 bangle at 76.8 degrees C2 bangle, in combination with a typically lower than average uh, stack height, the stack height on this bike is 635 millimeters. Typically, you know, uh, 29ers are going to have a higher stack, uh, stack height just because of the diameter of the tire pushes the front end of the bike up higher. This stack height is a little bit lower than most. And the combination of those two things, the steep, the steep C2 bangle and that lower stack height really puts you in a, in a good position when you're, when you're climbing those hills, you're not leaning too far back. And at the same time, you're not hunched over the handlebars, you know, hurting your lower back or anything like that. So it stays very comfortable, very upright and, you know, climbs great. So now we're going to talk about downhill. And this is kind of like the favorite part of, you know, the videos for me. Oh yeah, I ate up that first section really well. Feeling really good. The front fork is eating up this stuff. Oh, so in control. And again, we're going to talk about that Switch Infinity system because it's just, you know, nobody else has anything like it or similar to it. And what it does for you downhill is it, it gives you, it's almost like an extra shock in the back. I mean, it is an extra shock, literally an extra shock in the back, but it gives you, it, it, it makes you feel like your back end travel is just completely limitless because of all of the leverage curves and how it's going to help. Like when your regular shock is getting towards the end of it, this is actually going to compensate and give it even more travel, kind of a kind of more travel feeling. And it, it just makes your back end feel like, you know, you can do anything and it's a great feeling. Another thing that that Switch Infinity system does is it lessens and reduces the amount of chain kickback that you're getting into your pedals. Typically, you know, when you have your feet side by side like this, you're going through like a really rocky section. When that back end is moving, your chain, your chain is, you know, your, your, your drive train is, you know, moving with it as well. And it will tighten up. And as that chain tightens up, you're gonna feel a little bit of kickback through the chain into your cranks and into your feet. Um, what that Switch Infinity system does is it lessens that feeling. So what happens is you have less kickback, there's less of that chain growth affecting the way your back end is moving and your back end will actually stick to the ground better and give you more rear end traction. The only thing I was really worried about when I ride a 29er is how the front end is gonna feel for me. I'm used to 27.5 bikes. I, I like just how much, how nimble they are, how quick the, the front end is. You know, if you get offline, you can get back online very quickly. Um, some 29ers, <coughs> Santa Cruz, um, <laughs> have a problem with that for me, the way I ride. Uh, sometimes those bikes that we won't mention uh, understeer a lot for me, especially when you're getting into switch, you know, faster or slower switchbacks the bike will kind of, you know, it won't go on the line that you want it to. It'll, it'll get up a little bit higher because it just won't turn as quickly as you like or what you're used to. This bike, not at all. This bike, um, you know, there's a couple Burmese sections on the top of Rocket and I'll show you a clip really quick. Lots of front tire traction. Rider! Oh yeah, oh, ripping through that stuff. You're, you're switching back and forth really quick and, and I'm not the greatest person as far as balance goes and especially in those Burmy turns. This bike stayed online, on track the entire time for me and it just, it just gives you that much more confidence when a bike is doing what you, what you, you, know, you envision and it just does it and it does it really well and it holds that line and holds that traction and it just, it just pushes you to go that much harder. So overall, it's pretty obvious how I feel about this bike. Um, I love this bike. It's really, really good. I rode the silver, the, what is it, anthracite bike. I like that color a lot. It's a very cool looking color. I've never really been a big fan of the Yeti blue. Um, it's too, I don't know, it's too like yellowish for me. I like darker blue colors. Um, but the, the anthracite, the gray of the SB150 looks really cool. The, the biggest con for me of this bike is the price. The price of this bike starts, the, the T1 starts at $7,200. It's like $7,199, $7,200.
on top of that $7,200, if you want to go to carbon rims, it's another $1,600. So now you're looking at $8,800. That's a lot of money for a mountain bike. Now, if you have it and you want this bike, buy it. You're going to love it. Good for you. I, I mean, this bike will last you for, not forever, obviously, because stuff wears out. But if you take care of this bike, it will last you for many, many years. And you're going to have a blast on it. Even the entry model price of this bike, I'm looking at my notes here, is $5,700. That's the entry level. So that's the lower carbon model. And even still, that bike isn't really specced out what I would you know, assume other bikes are in that price range very well. I really think if they made an, uh, an aluminum version of this bike, it would just open them up to a broader audience. They would sell more bikes, obviously. They wouldn't have to change too much of the, the geometry and that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, if you look at the, the Ibis Ritmo, the AF and the version two, it's basically the same bike, just one's carbon and one's aluminum. So I really would like Yeti to do that. Um, but like I said, if you've got the money, buy it, dude. This, this bike is amazing. This thing is great uphill. This thing, I mean, it's amazing uphill and downhill. That's, that's all I can say. It pedals great. It pedals like a goat uphill. I actually PR'd one section pedaling this bike and I wasn't even really trying to. I mean, that's, I don't PR uphill sections. I don't, I don't go for that kind of stuff. And I did it without even trying on this bike. So that's, that just tells you how good this bike is climbing. Downhill, it's amazing. The, the Switch Infinity system just takes this bike to a whole nother level. It, all of the different, you know, the way it influences everything else about this bike, all the leverage curves, the anti-squat, the anti-rise, everything, that Switch Infinity system just makes this bike, you know, almost light years beyond what some of the other uh, bike manufacturers are doing. So if you're looking to buy a 29er and you have enough money to purchase this bike, I would definitely recommend it. This is going to be one of those one bike quivers, you know, you don't need anything else. You can take this bike anywhere. I mean, with 170 millimeters of travel in the front and 150 in the rear, you could take this to a bike park. You could take this to Highline Trail in Sedona. You could take this to the Strand out in Hermosa. It's, it's going to do everything and it's a really great bike. So the last thing I'm gonna say is, I just got back from Sedona Mountain Bike Festival, and out there I rode the Ibis uh, Ritmo version two. That is gonna be, you know, I think these two bikes, the SB150 and the version two, are gonna be pretty much top of the mountain as far as 29ers go, in my opinion, you know, as far as all around bikes. I'm gonna be doing that uh, Ritmo two version, uh, Ritmo version two video very soon. And then after I get out all of the other stuff, the Canyon Strive and also the SB165, I'm going to be doing a round out, you know, a roundup video of all the 29ers that I've ridden. The SB150, the Ritmo version 2, we're going to talk about the Canyon Strive, we're going to talk about the Giant Rain, um, and also the two YT bikes. I have ridden the Jeff C. I I want to try and get out on the Capra as well. And we're just going to talk about which bike I think, you know, is the best in each category as far as money how it rides uphill, downhill, overall, and all that good stuff. So last but not least, after you've heard me ramble on about this bike, do all that fun stuff like we did in the beginning of the video, hit that like button, please leave comments, please share these videos with your friends, definitely subscribe to the channel, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. One more thing, click on one of these boxes up here in the corners, one's gonna take you to a rides playlist, another to a recent video, and always click that logo in the center, the Urban Outdoorsman SoCal logo to subscribe. Thanks a lot.